I like to discuss infrared photography. In this video, I'll cover using neutral density or ND filters in infrared. I'll cover a couple different scenarios where ND filters can improve your infrared images. At the end of the video, I'll look at the latest IR ND filters from Kalari Vision, designed for consistent transmission of infrared light, and compare them to some inexpensive ND filters. If you're new to infrared photography, have recently converted a camera, or are about to convert a camera for infrared, I have something for you. I've written an ebook titled Getting Started with Your Converted Infrared or Full Spectrum Camera. This free ebook covers the styles of infrared photography, using external filters, selecting lenses, settings for shooting with your converted camera, and how to process your images. Subscribe to my newsletter to download this free ebook. The link is in the description. And now, back to ND filters. I'm using two of the Kalari IR ND filters, a 5-stop ND and a 10-stop ND. Let's start with the most obvious use for the ND filters in infrared photography, long exposures. Just like with visible light, you can use ND filters to increase the exposure time of your images. This is particularly helpful with converted cameras. If you're using an unconverted camera with a 720 nanometer infrared filter, the external filter and the camera's internal hot mirror already act like an ND filter, resulting in long exposures. However, if you're using a converted camera, your exposure times will be comparable to visible light photography. If you want longer exposures to blur motion, such as with water, you'll need to add an ND filter. These images were shot on my 590 nanometer converted Fujifilm X-T20 at f5.6 with an ISO of 200. Adding a 10-stop ND filter to this scene resulted in 3 to 5 second exposures. Adding both the 5 and 10-stop ND filters for a total of 15 stops resulted in 30 second exposures. On the left is a 3 second exposure with the 10-stop filter and on the right is a 30 second exposure with both the 5 and 10 stop filters. The long exposures smooth the water and create more visually appealing reflections. As you can see from these images, the colors are very clean. When I started using vintage lenses for infrared, I picked up some f1.4 lenses, a Canon 50mm 1.4, a Nikon 50mm 1.4, and more recently, a Mamiya Secor 55mm 1.4. Of course, when you have a lens with a wide aperture, you want to shoot it wide open. This can actually be a challenge with infrared. The shutter speed on my X-T20 only goes to 1 4,000th of a second. In broad daylight conditions with a wide open aperture, the fastest shutter speed and the lowest ISO, my images were overexposed by one to two stops. I can't use a faster shutter, I can't lower the ISO, and I don't want to increase the f-stop, and I can't turn down the sun, the best option is an ND filter. ND filters allow me to shoot with apertures that I wouldn't be able to otherwise, opening up new options for infrared images. I wanted to compare the Kalari IRND 5-stop and 10-stop filters to other ND filters to test the claims about transmission of infrared light. The only ND filters that I have are an inexpensive kit of 2, 4, and 8-stop square filters from Altura that I purchased 5 years ago. This was not a scientific or comprehensive test, but hopefully it would be enough to satisfy my curiosity. I tested for two things, accuracy in claimed stops stopped, and color shift as measured in white balance. I shot two scenes with and without all of these filters. First, let's cover stopping power. The inexpensive two-stop ND filter altered the exposure by only one stop. The four-stop stopped one and a third stops, and the eight-stop only stopped two and a third stops. When combined together for a claimed 14 stops, the actual stopping power was only four stops. The claims of these filters is wildly inaccurate. This is a perfect example of you get what you pay for when it comes to cheap filters. The Kalari IRND 5-stop filter produced an effective 4 and 2 thirds stops. The Kalari IRND 10-stop filter produced an effective 9 and 5 sixth stops. When combined for 15 stops, they produced 14 and a half stops of light blocking. The Kalari IRND filters accurately stopped the number of stops claimed. 
my results are very close to the advertised ratings. The minor differences could have been from filters, changing light conditions, or my testing method. Let's move on to color accuracy. For each test image, I applied the same temperature shifted profile, set a white balance at the same spot in the image, and compared to an unfiltered image. The inexpensive two-stop ND filter had an average temperature shift of just over 1000 Kelvin. The inexpensive 4-stop ND filter had an average temperature shift of just over 4,000 Kelvin. The inexpensive 8-stop ND filter had an average temperature shift of 15,000 Kelvin. When combining these filters, the temperature shift was even higher. Combining the 8-stop and 2-stop ND filters for a total of 10 stops, claimed, shifted the temperature from 8,000 Kelvin to 50,000 Kelvin. All other higher combinations also cap the temperature scale at 50,000 Kelvin. Practically speaking, this means that combining these filters shifted the color temperature so much that it could not even be corrected with a custom profile. This is where the Kalari IRND filters claim to have an edge over the typical ND filters. The even transmission of infrared and visible light. The Kalari IRND 5-stop filter shifted the color temperature an average of 1150 Kelvin compared to the unfiltered image. The Kalari IRND 10-stop filter shifted the color temperature an average of only 850 Kelvin. Combined, the Kalari IRND 5-stop and 10-stop filters shifted the color temperature an average of 2000 Kelvin. To put this in context, in visible light, daylight and shade are also 2000 Kelvin apart. In infrared, a 2000 Kelvin shift is easily correctable with the custom profile you're already using. In terms of image quality, the inexpensive filter displayed unusual concentric rings around the image, mostly visible in the sky. The Kalari filters had no issues relating to image quality. The images are clean, similar to the images without the filter. So what have I learned? Cheap filters are cheap. In this case, they're junk. Not only is the color shift extreme, they fall three times short of the claimed stopping power. For Kalari IRND filters, the effective stopping power is accurately rated and any color shift is easily manageable. I can highly recommend the Kalari IRND filters for infrared photography. If you find these videos helpful on your infrared photography journey, please consider liking, subscribing, or leaving a comment. Do you have any topics related to infrared photography that you'd like to see addressed? Leave a comment below. Hope you enjoyed! Thanks.